If you've ever had an alcoholic drink at all, uh, which is pretty much everybody, uh, you've probably had to deal with a hangover. And it kind of blows my mind, and it has blown my mind, and it, and it uh, you know, came up last year. I started really thinking about this. So I was like, everybody's had a hangover at some point, pretty much. So why has nobody solved the hangover? Why has nobody actually had a cure or a prevention for a hangover that really, truly works? And uh, the answer to that is because a lot of people actually, there's been surprisingly little research into what really causes a hangover. So I looked into it. There's a research group called the Alcohol Hangover Research Group, which is a symposium essentially of PhDs who meet every year and they're trying to solve and they're working to solve the hangover in terms of real good research. And uh, they, their site is actually a treasure trove of research. And so what we determine based on their research is that hangovers actually are caused by four things. And I'm gonna talk about those four things in this video, and this is how we're gonna cure the hangover. This is how you get rid of a hangover, by knowing exactly why your body gets rid of the hangover. There's all these, you know, these cures out there, like these myths, these wive tales of the cures, like, oh, you gotta go eat greasy food, or you gotta go um, drink pickle juice to hang it from your toes. The problem is, a lot of those things are only trying to address one of the four things, and a lot of people think that it's only caused by one thing, like, oh, it's only caused by dehydration, for example. The problem is, there's, there's other factors involved. So today, in this Truth Tuesday, we're gonna get into what those other factors are, and actually what are some uh, all natural ingredients that you could use to really help with those four key things. So let's get into it. So let's look at, in this video, what is a hangover? Like I mentioned, a lot of people focus on one aspect of it. They, they try to solve just one aspect of it. The problem is it's actually a four-part system. After looking into this, you know, your body really is a system and it operates on all these different levels. People think, oh, if I solve this one tiny thing that it'll, you know, cure. And this is not just with hangovers. They think that with everything. And that's why a lot of people go toward taking drugs, pharmaceuticals for certain reasons. It's because the, the doctors, the traditional allopathic medicine right now, modern medicine only looks usually at one thing. Uh, yes, telegram for hungover. <laughs> yes, I, I'll sign for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, boy. The thing is, there's always confounding factors, all sorts of different factors involved with how to solve a problem naturally in your body. So we got to look at the system involved. We're going to look at this system today. You know, for, for generations, actually, people have always thought that a hangover was basically like an inescapable consequence of drinking alcohol. Like it's uh, some kind of, you know, necessary evil to have fun drinking alcohol. Oh, God. I am so hungover. Oh, me too. You know, the average drinker consumes somewhere between 7 to 14 drinks per week which that's that's true leaving us really susceptible to the dreaded you know the morning after essentially you know like the consequence the splitting headache the nausea the brain fog all of this is associated with this routine every single week for some people uh. pop are you okay who did this to you who did this to you and uh you know it's a necessary evil for a lot of people because there's actually alcohol and drinking and having a couple of drinks with your friends it, there's a lot of uh, a lot a big social aspect to that in our culture and doesn't necessarily make it a bad thing i mean the social aspect is very important for a lot of people where friendships are made business is done all this happens typically over a couple of drinks and you can forge you know good friendships with people and, and good relationships in general and this has been the way it's been for for centuries actually but a lot of people just never ask, you know, why do I put up with the hangover part of it? Why don't I actually try and solve this naturally? There's been a lot of advancements in, in software and medicine, all that sort of thing. But there hasn't been much of an advancement in terms of the hangover. Until now, we found the research from the Alcohol Hangover Research Group and determined a hangover is not one thing. What we call a hangover is not an actual medical condition because a hangover is not one condition. A hangover is the result of several bodily processes occurring in response to drinking alcohol. Now, in order to prevent a hangover, each one of these bodily processes must be addressed accordingly. So let's go through each one. All right, first one, step one, you need to address this, take notes, dehydration. So this is pretty obvious for a lot, a lot of people know this. And this is typically where a lot of people try and solve, you know, the only step that they try and solve. So for a really long time, people thought that dehydration was the only cause of a hangover. Alcohol is much harder for the body to process than regular food and drink. Therefore, your demand for water really increases on a night out, especially when there is a 
release of a hormone known as vasopressin from your hypothalamus. Now, vasopressin actually stimulates what's known as uh, breaking the seal. Essentially, when you have you know a couple drinks and then you start to really uh, have to go to the bathroom really often, and the frequent urination is what actually dilutes the concentration of electrolytes in your body and causes dehydration in your body. So that's the step. That's one part of this whole puzzle: dehydration. The second one is toxic waste production in the body. Actually, alcohol metabolism has not been very well studied, but we do know one thing. Alcohol metabolism in the liver produces toxic byproducts called acetaldehydes. Your body naturally has acetaldehyde dehydrogenase, which is a, a uh, enzyme that breaks it down, and glutathione stores that turn these toxic substances into acetate, which is thought to be harmless at low levels. When your glutathione storage runs out, this leaves the toxic substances in your body, which have been shown to cause flushing, sweating, and vomiting, much like when any other toxic substance enters your body. So this is where really that nausea comes from and that, that sickness feeling like you have the flu. Oh, all right, I'll be right back. I, I just have to throw up a little bit. All right, step three is immune system failure. So the consumption of alcohol also puts a heavy load on your immune system. Studies show that there are significant changes in immune system parameters during a hangover, namely increased concentrations of cytokines, which are released during an inflammatory response. So there's a big inflammation response when you drink too much alcohol. Now it's likely that these cytokines are the culprit behind many cognitive effects of alcohol, like the memory issues, the brain fog, the mood changes, that stuff. Cerebral cytokines have also been shown in animal studies to increase sickness behavior such as weakness, inability to concentrate, and reduced appetite. Now that probably sounds familiar. It's exactly what's happening on, on that one level in the hangover. Wow, you look really hungover, Dad. What did you do last night? Last night? Um... Now step four is what's known as the glutamine rebound. This step basically happens after you've already gone to sleep. The cause of nausea and vomiting is often attributed only to the alcohol qu quantity, but have you ever slept so poorly that you felt sick? Vomiting while drinking is a result of your body rejecting this, this toxic poison, essentially, especially if you drink too much, uh, that you just ingested. But once it's all processed, much of your hangover nausea is actually from poor sleep quality due to the glutamine rebound. Now, a lot of people don't, don't realize this. It's actually a really nuanced and kind of cool thing. When someone's drinking, alcohol inhibits one of the body's natural stimulants, glutamine. When the drinking stops, the body will immediately begin producing more glutamine to catch up. This glutamine rebound almost always happens while you are asleep, stimulating the body and keeping you from reaching your deepest sleep all night. The resulting daytime sleepiness is basically what accounts for any sensitivity to light and the general weakness that you're going to feel in the morning. And this glutamine rebound typically is going to happen. For those of you who know, you know, in the middle of the night when your blood alcohol level hits zero, typically you, a lot of people wake up. And this is due to the glutamine rebound, which is it's cool to actually uh, kind of put a name to a face in terms of, you know, everyone that's had a bad hangover has felt that you wake up in the middle of the night, you can't sleep. Uh, you, for some reason, you're wide awake, uh, even, you know, and you can't figure out why, even when you're really tired. And that's because of the glutamine rebound. Now you have to, if you want to prevent or cure a hangover, you have to attack each of these pain points, each of these four steps, which again are the dehydration, the toxic waste production from the liver, the immune system failure slash inflammatory response, and the glutamine rebound. You got to attack each of those individually in order to cure or prevent a hangover. Oh, I don't feel so hot. What is wrong with me? Have you taken a break since you started drinking? Not until right now. Do you feel like lying on the couch rubbing your eyes while listening to Lou Reed's Perfect Day? Yes! Then I'll tell you what's wrong with you. You got a hangover. Now here are some of the ingredients that are extremely key. Now if we're going to attack each and every single level of these, of these, these four steps, these are natural ingredients that you can use to do that. So the first one is a powerful B vitamin complex. Now B vitamins are super helpful, very, very important in this, in this process. The second is key electrolytes like uh, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and calcium. Like I said, with the dehydration, uh, you really, when that vasopressin is stimulated, you really start to dilute your electrolyte concentration in your body, and that starts to lead to some of these, these issues. Another one is chromium, because chromium is going to help you control 
the vasopressin release. When you take chromium, it'll actually kind of halt that vasopressin from stimulating the, you know, breaking the seal action in your body. So chromium is pretty cool. And we have that in Sensilin and we also have that in uh, this new hangover hardware formula that we've developed. The next is milk thistle. Milk thistle helps to detox your liver. It helps on that step of the uh, toxic waste production in your liver. So the milk thistle is really important for that as well as choline. Choline is super important for taking care of your liver as well. Now on the inflammatory side, you really want to consume very potent antioxidants. Turmeric is a really good one if you have some good organic turmeric. Olive leaf extract is considered one of the most powerful antioxidants on earth. That's a really good one too for controlling this inflammation response, the cytokines. Um, ginseng is also super good. Another thing that you can take is alpha lipoic acid and then N-acetylcysteine, which you actually will find a lot of N-acetylcysteine in um, people's recommendations and that's for good, for good reason. It helps uh, also with that glutamine rebound afterward. And the last but not least is taurine. Taurine is really awesome um, for a lot of different reasons. It also stimulates uh, your metabolism and helps your thyroid. So all this being said, this is actually a recent project I've been working on, another supplement project where we've developed this formula called Hangover Hardware. And Hangover Hardware is based on this simple premise, can we solve the hangover naturally? Can we prevent people from getting a hangover when they go out and have fun with their friends? And the answer is yes. We've been testing this, we've been working on this for over a year. Um, my brother, who is a, an engineer, helped develop this, and this stuff is freaking awesome. So Hangover Hardware contains all these ingredients to address the four main steps. Uh, if you want to try it for yourself, click through. I'll have a link in the description going to the Hangover Hardware site. You can check it out. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching this. And uh, I hope this really helped you get some more clarity in terms of the direct cause of your hangover, in terms of a systemic view of your body, the way your body is really working, and the way that alcohol does affect your body and causes this hangover in the first place. Thanks for watching. Check out Hangover Hardware. It's over at hangoverhardware.com or there will be a link in the description.